I, Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, have been appointed a Chief Administrative Secretary in the Government of Kenya. My name is Nadia Ahmed Abdallah. As you all know, I'm the Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of ICT Innovation and Affairs. Currently the youngest, I'm 29 years old. I know a lot of times most women are like, Nadia, why do you say your age? A woman is not supposed to say her age. But I feel like I should really mention it because it inspires another young person who is watching me or is listening to me to know that whatever aspiration you have, you can be able to do it. A bit about who Nadia is. So I am an avid mental health champion since an advocate since 2015. I am a public relations practitioner, but I'm also a trained a cultural diplomat. I am very enthusiastic about travel, very enthusiastic about African literature, very, very passionate about young people and representation, leadership and governance. So I'm just this, I would say a melting pot of a new way of how young people should look at leadership and how we should lead according to how we understand things, especially in the executive. Well, uh, so basically the Chief Administrative Secretary, a lot of times I tell young people it's equivalent to an Assistant Minister. It's basically an Assistant Minister, but in a much more vibey kind of way, you know. <laughs> the title is just different, but it's an Assistant Minister. And most of the things that we do is, like one of the things I do is to advise uh, the CS on the different policies that are there, the different programs, implementations that are there. I also represent the CS and events, conferences, or even different, uh, I would say, government organizations that he is not able to go, so I'm able to represent him and also raise my voice into it. We also are in charge of spearheading policies, implementations, programs that the government has in order for us to make sure that they work well on the national platform towards the young people. Our ministry is actually ICT, Innovation and Youth Affairs. So you can imagine like having a young Chief Administrative Secretary, um, especially looking at these different elements, it helps in also articulating the different policies and programs that young people don't understand. You know, a lot of times young people feel like when it comes to government, there's a lot of weddings, there's a lot of this and this and confusion, <laughs> exactly. So I think one of the mandates and one of the reasons why the president took some of us young people in this position is so that we are able to really break down and articulate what government responsibilities are and in a way to help the cabinet secretary achieve the mandate, the core mandate of the uh, ministry and the government of Kenya as a whole. The weight is so heavy and I think I can back it back to when I first came into the office, you know, you're, I've never worked in like national government and then coming in and huge responsibilities that are there in a, in a sector that is male dominated. I, I think my anxiety was on the roof because I was like, okay, I have responsibilities, I have a mandate to achieve, I have to be able to articulate things well, I have to be able to understand policies, I have to do this, I, have to, I mean there are thousands and thousands of things but at the same time I think it's a very very good place to be at because 
when you're outside, you don't really understand how systems work. Now that I'm in this place, I'm able to now understand why this program has been set like this and I'm able to tell now other young people that this is why it works, this is why it doesn't work. And I think it's also a new dawn of, how do you put it, like a new dawn of empowerment and motivation to young people. I had a conversation with my sister and I was telling her sometimes it's so tough for me because I might go somewhere. I'm very, I'm, I'm a person who likes color, a lot of color. I like dressing up, I like looking good. So when I go somewhere, people sometimes overlook the whole element of me being in a government position they think I'm just some young woman who just came and maybe from a private sector or an NGO and everything then once I take the podium and I start talking I start articulating things that's when they'll ask oh my god so who's training her does she have like a mentor or, or who is she that's when now they start acknowledging that I'm actually in a space where I need to be in. So I think with, with, with being a woman, it's, it's not about explaining to them whether or not you deserve to be in that space. It's just showing them. And that's what I've done ever since I joined here. I've literally just shown everyone I am supposed to be here. I belong here. And I think what has helped me, and I say this a lot, is my cabinet secretary. My cabinet secretary is a really motivating person. I think he's the one who's built my confidence because when I started, I was so scared, will I be able to do this? But then he gives us a chance, both myself and, and others, we get a chance to showcase what we know and showcase what we don't know as well. He gives us room to be able, or gives me room to be able to make mistakes. And that is something I think when a woman is in a certain position like this, that's, what, that's the kind of support you need. You need support where someone trusts you enough to tell you, okay, this is what you need to do, now just do it. Whether or not you make a mistake, that's totally fine. So I think young people should also adapt to that. It's not about how much you know, it's about just speaking. It's about just saying. It's about just taking command of whatever it is and then letting them now adjust towards what you've given them. I know there's a lot of uh, issues among young people. They always talk about, oh, right now, the young people, the government is looking for them to fight for COVID because they have to put their life on the line. I was a very... <laughs> vocal kid. I mean, if I remember what my late mom and my grandma oh, and my aunts tell me is that I was this kid who just wanted to talk. Like, I would just say whatever. I would not really care about who I'm saying it to. I would just share my opinion. And then I remember at the age of 13, and I say this a lot, at the age of 13, I have had two idols. One was Oprah Winfrey and one was uh, late Kofi Annan. Now, if you see these two idols, it's basically a definition of who Nadia is because Oprah Winfrey is so much into communication and really articulating the social sphere of different people and challenges and everything. Then if you look at late Kofi Annan's life, he's a humanitarian, he's a diplomat. And he was someone who was the Secretary General of the United Nations. And so at a very tender age, I just wanted to be either or. And so what was I doing? I used to like um, talk a lot. I used to just do weird things, honestly. I used to take part in different uh, uh, things in school. I used to really not be an A student, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I remember my late mom once told me, Nadia, I'm so tired of coming to school to take your report card because all what I hear is, Nadia can do better. Nadia can do this. I was very good in literature and ge uh, geography. Um, I, I loved to sing. I loved to act. I remember at one point in time, I wanted to be a choreographer. Then I was like, hey, Nadia, you're from Mombasa. How is this going to happen? How are you going to be a choreographer? Uh, but yeah, and, and then like just, I, I struggled a lot, I will tell you, um, because I was never a small child. Like I was very chubby. So I've experienced bullying, uh, which really, destroyed my self-esteem at some point. Uh, my confidence wasn't as the way it is right now, which is on the roof, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, and uh, I went to school in Mombasa. So I, I went to primary in a school called Nyali Primary. 
um, and then I went to high school in Oshawa. So I basically did both the 844 and the IGCSE system. So now this actually curved me to be the person I am today. Why? Because I was able to understand both systems and both systems allow you to grow in their own way. 844 teaches you how to like, you know, you have to pass, you have to pass, you have to do this. Then IGCSE, I was fortunate enough, it teaches you how to think beyond what your mind can tell you. And so being in high school, I remember I used to get in so much problems because I wanted to fit in. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to be in the cool groups. So that made me do a lot of things which for me right now, I'm not really proud of, you know, like Kimbelembele Sana and this, but that was my character. I was very artsy. Um, I was very competitive, but not in education. <laughs> <laughs> I was competitive in the sense that I would always want to get newspapers, magazines, cutouts, then create like a magazine. So I would buy those A4, Zile Unazujua Zile, the, what are they called? The Karatasi brand books, A4. I would post pictures, then I would write. I would write stories. I would write about myself. Um, I remember I used to write letters to myself because I grew up in a mixed family so my mom was remarried so i didn't really grow up with my my real dad but of course my stepdad has is the reason why i am the way i am today because he was very strict very hardworking, but very open-minded which is something very weird i tend to figure like how can you be strict and open-minded at the same time but it was him who made me instill this ethics a mentality in me like no matter what however bad or good you are you always have to achieve something and so I just used to do things according to what my mind tells me from there at 18 I went to university I went to Malaysia I did my bachelor's in public relations and communication I think that's why I talk 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 <laughs> because I mean you undergrad you are taught how to talk how to design things, how to do this, how to do that. And then I did my master's in Berlin uh, in international relations and cultural diplomacy. So I got exposure to both two different worlds, you know, the Southeast Asian world where it's similar to, to Africa and then the European world where, you know, you have your rights, you can do whatever, you can say whatever. So I think doing that, when I came back to Kenya, I started my own network, it was called Fierce Lady Official. If you're a young person, it's okay not to be okay. Really, it's okay not to be okay. And this network was on the basis of mental health and just representation of women in, in Kenya. And I knew that I had to start somewhere, so I started in Mombasa. Um, I, I, I started with small events, I used to do campaigns. Let me tell you, I used to buy Manila paper and write, I think I have pictures, I'll share. I used to write, stop GVV, stop mental health, women, you have your rights, this and that. So you can imagine coming from a society where, yes, there are some women who talk, but then there are others who, are, who don't talk as much. Then you have this young lady who just goes with whatever she says and everything and believes in whatever it is. I stepped on some toes that were not really happy with what I was doing, but I, I didn't let that stop me. So I used my social media platform to actually get known even more. Rather than me spending time on checking out what is the in thing or the trend in, in Kenya, I just started a page and I was posting, why is mental health important? Why do you need to speak up when you're going through gender-based violence? Why is it that leadership and governance is important? I came up with forums, I did events, I used to invite young women, older women, the youths. I used to do trainings for free at Swahili Pot. I, I mean, I used to write newsletters and share with people. And I used to do short videos, post them on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. So I just, I was just, let me tell you, I was doing everything, you know, just so that my voice can be felt and so that my presence can be seen. <laughs> Na nataka kuwapa pongezi vijana wote mko hapa mtaku volunteer kusaidia community zetu then there was an amazing opportunity that came up, which was there was a show called Miss President. They're looking for people, and so I applied for it. Let me tell you, I didn't expect to be accepted because I was like, I was just this typical young person, which is a typical young Kenyan doesn't really look so much into reading about how the government works, how this does this, how this does that. But I was like, it's not gonna stop me. 
you know i still applied and i remember i went for the first interview and i went blank i didn't know anything but next thing you know they called me up and they told me oh you've been accepted just come so i i joined the miss president show i went to the academy so from there i was trained looking back at it right now i realized that miss president actually prepared me for this job because i from there we were trained on civic education we were trained on government functions we were trained on how to read policies how to come up with policies and stuff i mean out of 72 i was eliminated at 18 which is not bad i made my point and my point was a young lady from mombasa can actually be in a show and say yes maybe i'll be the president one day that's what i did and so i think from all that god and someone out there and the president and his team they were watching me because next thing you know in january i hear the president mentioning my name i did not see this job coming i did not even see myself you know when you're working towards something you don't I was working towards, you know, I want to have my own structure, my own thing. I need to train young people, maybe open a school in the future. And then boom, you're in a position. Then you're put in a place where you actually have used the digital platform and you've used young people to work with them, to be able to teach them. I, Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, have been appointed a Chief Administrative Secretary in the Government of Kenya. Do swear that I will at all times be faithful to the Republic of Kenya. And so that's how I got to my place where I am today. So if you like see from the brief that I've shared of how it is, it was like as if the universe, I would say God, but it has was really like just taking me pieces by pieces and in a road where I know this is not the final destination, but it's it's a step towards something greater. <music> My dreams and goals is to really first make sure that young people understand their own dynamics. What do I mean by this? I mean that, yes, and I say this a lot, yes, the challenges are there that young people face. Yes, you know, we have issues of uh, unemployment, we have issues of lack of understanding of the opportunities that are there, we have issues of insecurity. But as a young person, the first thing I'd like to do is to make sure they understand that Kenya is actually you. And that's why I say it a lot. I say Kenya ni mimi. Why do I say this? Because just like your own house, the responsibility starts with yourself. Who are you as a Kenyan? What is it that you want to do and achieve? Because a lot of times you'll find young people, they're saying, Oh, we don't, the government doesn't have this. The government is not doing this. But I want to teach young people, the government is a facilitator, okay? The government is a facilitator to make sure private, public, and other bodies come together, then bring out something out of it. So like there are amazing programs that the government has. And if I wasn't in this position, I wouldn't know. And these programs that young people need to start being proactive to doing. So Kumbu, like you have to understand, Kenya ni wewe kama kijana. That's the first thing. Then the next thing I want to do for young people, not in a hundred percent, because you know, it, I need to be very careful with saying this, not hundred percent outcome, but whatever to my own capacity that I will reach, is to make sure young people understand that love, peace, and unity lies within themselves. You know, the patriotism, you can see young people, some of them have feel like, oh, we are not part of it. We are not part of the conversation. We are not part of this, we're not part of that. So I want to reinstill that back to young people. So I, I drafted a Kenya Nimimi campaign, which I divided it into four groups. There is the opportunities and education, there is the innovation, there is the mental health, and there is the values. Now, sit back and listen. So, <laughs> the opportunities and education, my goal is to basically bring all the government programs into one stop. What do, do, I, do I mean by that? When I go outside, because a lot of what I do, by the way, I go to the ground a lot to interact with young people, which is a very effective way of doing things because they will not feel my presence. They will not understand why I'm in this position if I'm going to be in the office all the time. So I go to the young people. I now collaborate with the different organizations that our ministry has. So like for our ministry, we have programs like KOP. 
uh, Kenya Youth Employment Opportunities, we have Youth Enterprise Development Fund, we have a Wezo Fund, we have a Kikao that we do under the State Department, we have Ajira Digital, which is under the Ministry of ICT. All these things, I come up, I bring on board the officers so that they are able to now tell us significantly and tell the young people what is it they're doing, how much have they done, what are they disembursing, and what is the effect of it. So when we go there, we are educating the young people on the opportunity that is there. That way, it kind of balances between the young people saying, we don't know what the opportunities are, we don't know where the programs are, we don't know where to get them. So I bring the officers to you, together with the youth officers that are on the ground, and we teach them. Then from teaching them, I also now ask and challenge the young people. I ask them, okay, what is working for you? Because you know it's a dialogue. It's very important for us as the government to also understand whether something is working for the young people or it's not working for them. So I also get opinions for them. Why is it working? Why is it not working? So what does this do? This educates, this creates civic education between the young people, and it also creates awareness to know what they're doing. Then when it comes to innovation, we're a ministry of ICT innovation with affairs. A lot of times young people think innovation is just IT related, but someone in the rural area can be innovative. There was the boy who actually created the washing, the hand washing thing and used the, his leg to do that. That's an innovative mechanism. So, you know, we want to see if we are able to go to the different places, we're able to meet these young people and we're able to see what are the opportunities that we can now link them to so that they are able to be seen, to be known and even capture. So I also use my social media presence to help these young people get known. And then we have the mental health aspect, which is, I mean, I think, by the end of this year, I think that the entire Kenya will know, like, Nadia is just, if it's mental health, just call her. Let's talk to her about it. Because why is this so? Because I want to normalize the conversations. You know, five, one in every five Kenyan is suffering from mental health. And mental health in, young, in a Kenyan starts, uh, mental health issues, starts at the age of 14. Imagine, I, I think approximately 45% and then it develops. So by the time you're 25, your mental illness problem has actually now created a strong foundation. And at 25, you know, you're like, okay, something is happening to me. You are not aware, like from the age of 14, it's developing. So I want to now like, break this stereotype around mental health. I want to tell young people it's okay not to be okay. Yes, you're facing a lot of challenges. Yes, you're facing a lot of problems, but can you first acknowledge that you don't need to have it all together at this time. You know, you, COVID has come, it's disrupted, some have lost jobs, some have done this. But what can we do beyond that? Because I think for us to contribute to the socioeconomic sphere of the country, we need to have a healthy country. I mean, if young people here, we're not okay, there's no way we're going to function. There's no way we're going to keep jobs. There's no way you're going to say no to a political person from using you and, and uh, affecting, and I mean, attacking some other person. And then we have the values, which is what I started. I think my vision is to really just bring back the Kenya, Kenyaism, I would say, patriotic element in a young person's life. Because the responsibility is ours. If today, as a young person, I say, you know what, I don't want to do this again. Who am I leaving Kenya for in 10 years to come? So I really want young people to understand peace comes from us. We have to say no from being used. Unity comes from us. We have to unify ourselves. If you today, let's say Nadia is good in stitching and Rachel is good at makeup, why can't we collaborate and create an enterprise? An enterprise that will not only help us, but will help to employ other people. So that's what like, I would say, I've summarized what I want my goal for young people is, which is Kenya ni Mimi. I want us to really take up Kenya on a personal level. It's our responsibility to reform the country. It's our responsibility to show the government that these are the programs working so that the government can also now add more value into what they're doing. Because you know, it's, it's a ripple effect. If the programs are not working for young people, then how will we say, okay, we have to do more programs for it? You know, so it, it's, it's that. And for women, which is a very, very sensitive constituency, I think the problem, the biggest problem women have is we see each other as competitors and we are not. 
we are not competitors. You know, today you're seeing Nadia, she's here, she's in a government space. You don't want to mentor her. You don't want to support her because you feel like she's going to be greater than you and she'll achieve more than you have ever achieved. And then this ideology of us proving. You know, we don't need to prove to anyone that we deserve to be on that seat. Rather than making noise and saying, we have to be this, we have to be that, can we just be? Nobody will accept you if you don't accept yourself. And, and that's one thing I'm doing right now. As, as a young woman in such a space, I'm creating my own space, I'm creating my own value. If you like what I do, and if you like the value of what I am and who I am, I don't mind collaborating with you. I don't mind working with you. But if you see me as a threat, then I believe that there's a lot that you're losing. So I'm focusing more on creating the definition of what a young woman and a leader has to be, rather than looking at what did not work back then. My advice for a young woman is to be unapologetically ambitious with whatever you need to do. Be very true to yourself, be very kind, be very humble, but at the end of the day, be consistent in what you're going to do. Consistency is something I wish someone had told me back then, because I was not as consistent, I would do this, this and that, um, but consistency actually helps you pave a way for yourself in life. Dream big, but start small. I think my legacy would be, a, it would be based on two things, mental health and the issue of tribe. I wish and hope to make young people understand that we are not defined by our tribe. We are defined by our ambition. We are defined by the love we have for one another and we are defined by the truthfulness of what we do. The final words are basically just, just be yourself. Don't be scared of who is who don't be scared of the mistakes you make and this is something that i think my cabinet secretary has really instilled in me don't fear making mistakes fear not making those mistakes because mistakes define who you are today and tomorrow so that's it and we're not the leaders of tomorrow by the way we're the leaders of now we're the leaders of 230 we're the leaders of literally we're the leaders of now so don't be discouraged don't lose hope and even if you've lost it try to find it relocate it and bring it back because your hope is what we need to survive so